you so much, Kiran, for taking time out and talking to us. Uh, scaling biologics is one of the areas that we felt was most important. We want to pick your brains before we do our panel discussions to understand your view, your vision of how do we scale biologics to take India to the next level. If you remember, in 2004, under Bala Manian's uh, overall guidance, we had taken up opportunities in biotechnology, India's position. And you gave the keynote address then. And now, after 18 years, we are again talking of in this position in biologics. So we've been seeing this happen, but not really India is becoming a significant player in the global market. What would be the reasons for that? Very good question. Uh, the, why is it that Biocon has remained fairly on its own Yes. when it comes to investing in biologics manufacturing mm -hmm. and scaling up when it comes to biologics mm -hmm. manufacturing? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was then quite struck by a couple of factors. Okay. One is that I think India as a country tends to basically have a sectoral focus mm -hmm. based on a set of success metrics. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the success metrics of generic medicines, mm -hmm. everyone then wants to basically play in that space because it's a tried and tested sector mm -hmm. with very assured returns on certain investments. Then the market starts uh, judging you by ROCE mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, then it becomes very difficult to justify the big differences between investing in genetics versus biologics. Mm -hmm. And that's where then I think, uh, you know, there is this stepping in and stepping out very quickly. So what I found is that uh, the investment needs mm -hmm. of investing in biomanufacturing mm -hmm. order of magnitude or many orders Absolutely. of magnitude higher than generic medicines. Correct. Starting with drug substance mm. and then of course drug products. As you know, when it comes to drug products, it's all sterile fill and finish facilities yes. and when it comes to drug substance it's mm. very high-end sterile manufacturing of at a, yeah. uh, in terms of mammalian cell culture mm. or any of those biologic manufacturing platforms. Mm. So what tends to happen is that uh, when you have to balance or take judgment calls mm. between investing 10 million dollars versus 100 million dollars mm. the obvious choice is 10 million dollars especially when the return on investment is so much more predictable yes the gestational timelines are much shorter and the return on investment is much higher i think that is what has kept companies away from investing in biomanufacturing mm, yes are we risk averse it's it not about risk -averse. i don't think it's about risk it's more to do with Risk, yes, in one sense, if we had actually invested in novel biologics, I think then the ecosystem would have been created and then okay. you would have had the risk appetite to invest in biologics. Right. <laughs> but today, we are a generics country, yes. let's face it. Yes. And with that kind of risk level, hmm. then obviously people are risk averse to biosimilars. Right. Because biosimilars has a much higher yeah. level of risk Correct. associated Correct. with it. Correct. Both in terms of investment risks huh. and the regulatory risks. Why do I say that? Is because to develop one A and D A would hmm. probably cost you not more than five million dollars. Mm -hmm. To develop one biosimilar, you know, BLA hmm. will cost you at least hundred million dollars. That's the stark difference. Yes. And then the five million dollars is almost an assured approval. You may be not first to file, you may not be first to the market, but certainly you will get there very soon. Yes. In the case of biosimilars, it's not assured. Mm -hmm. In fact, many companies who have tried to develop biosimilar BLAs have actually been rudely shocked when they've actually gone through the clinical program because that's why it costs $100 million. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike 
generics which only need BEBA studies, you need phase 3 clinical trials yes. and comparative clinical trials. That's where many companies have failed to cross the finishing line. Now, after spending $100 million, if you still are not assured of regulatory approvals, you can understand how high the risk is. Absolutely. That is the main reason why Indian companies have not invested in biologics manufacturing or biosimilars development. And we happen to now be the only company in the country at uh -huh. scale. At scale, yes. So you do have quite a few companies who have invested in biosimilars and biomanufacturing, but it's at a very small scale and not at the regulatory scale that is required for global biosimilars. So you ended up developing biosimilars for India at small scale and that's where we've remained. So it's not like we don't have biomanufacturing yeah. but we have it at very small scale. Two things uh, before we close the discussion. One is are there ways of collaborating uh, to build this market? The other is your vision of biologics in India. Maybe three yeah. or five years vision. So I personally believe you know the government can play a very key role. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily by throwing money. Yes at companies to try and get them to invest more but by assured access programs assured you know procurement programs okay. advanced purchase programs uh -huh. you know all this happened during the vaccine uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the, the vaccine development programs during the pandemic right. why can't we replicate that for biologics is the question okay if the government was prepared to huh. pay billions of dollars to vaccine companies right. in India Right. to scale up their manufacturing. You know that Bharat Biotech right. got advanced uh, yeah. purchase uh, uh, agreements. agreements. Right. Uh, Biological E got it. Uh, Serum Institute of course had done it on their own but they, they were able to basically get into big purchase contracts with the government. All this helped the vaccine industry to grow up and strengthen and scale up. Right. If you were to use that as a case in point you should be able to do the same with biologics. You should be able to draw the inference of success Yes, absolutely. It. So okay. today, if the government was to say, look, we want to see the biomanufacturing scaled up hmm. and we are willing to sign advanced purchase agreements for following biosimilars, for instance, hmm. Hmm. with different companies. I'm sure companies will be willing to invest, right? I know, for instance, that in Malaysia, hmm. where we've invested quite a large amount yes. in insulin manufacturing, right. one of the, you know, sort of uh, driving, you know, sort of incentives that got us to go to Malaysia was the offtake agreement that mm -hmm. we have with the Malaysian government for insulin purchase. Oh, I see. So uh -huh. today, almost 80 to 90 percent hmm. of the insulin procurement in Malaysia hmm. is from our facility. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Those are the kind of schemes you need. Okay. Then people will be willing to invest. It's just like the vaccine story. Yes. When, yes. when the vaccine companies were told the government will basically assure you of procurement that's when everyone started investing Absolutely. or basically use that advanced purchase money to start scaling up those are some of the things which we need to do as an advanced purchase where that becomes your subsidy or your incentive thank you very briefly your vision my yes, vision sir. for biotech hmm. is huge okay? okay i believe that india has a very very big opportunity hmm. in terms of what is happening in the biotech world today. Mm -hmm. Let's start with personalized medicine, yes. cell and gene therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we have a big opportunity in cell and gene therapy. These are, you know, almost plug and play kind of opportunities for, okay. for companies. Mm -hmm. These are opportunities where hospitals can actually provide very high-end therapies for a lot of unmet needs in mm -hmm. cancer and genetic deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And I think this is an area with which again we have neglected because there wasn't enough money invested in these areas. Now at least we have a few of these cell therapy companies yes. coming up. I've invested in one of them called Immunil, but there's Immunact. There are many other companies yes. which are also starting to come up. I think this is an opportunity
opportunity because it is a very interesting partnership between hospitals, clinicians and scientists Correct. and startups. Yes. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity. Just right. think about it. If you were able huh. to create hundreds of CAR T or gene therapy facilities huh. at various hospitals and clinics, huh. just think of what that business opportunity yes. could be and the medical tourism opportunity that Absolutely. it could deliver. And we have the capabilities. Okay. Then let's think about uh, synthetic biology, hmm. huge opportunity. I think agri-biotech is a huge opportunity in hmm. many, many ways. I think the circular economy is also driving a lot of technological opportunities hmm. in terms of bio-waste. Right, right. Hmm. And then finally, I come to biopharmaceuticals, hmm. which is always something I believe in. I think we've done very well in vaccines. We need to replicate that success in biologics. I think biologics has a huge, huge opportunity for India. Given the disease burden that we have yes. in both cancer, diabetes and inflammatory disease. And all these sectors are veering towards very important biotechnologies mm -hmm. of whether it is recombinant technologies like for GLP-1s mm -hmm. or whether it is mammalian cell culture technologies for monoclonal antibodies or whether it is, you know, fusion proteins, bispecifics, antibody conjugates. I always believe antibody conjugates are yeah. going to be very important and India should be very strong in that. Yeah. Yeah. So these are some of the areas where I think we should be focusing on. Uh, I know that ABLE uh, has sort of provided a roadmap of all these yes. opportunities and strategies. We've always been wanting in terms of policy and serious investments and incentives. And without those investment incentives, I'm afraid we will still be having the same discussion in 2030 and maybe 2047. But I'm hopeful uh, yes. that by 2047, at least, we should be in a much brighter yes. position in terms of uh, our capabilities in biomanufacturing. That is my fervent hope. Thank you. And uh, so do I. I think this is no longer a good to have. It's a must have for India. Thank you so much, Kiran, for your time. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. Actually, this makes way to our two panel discussions that uh, will start now. Thank you.